dysfunctional vet. What we're going to do is fine tune our drip system. This will be an ongoing process through the summer as heat, wind, rainfall, and other factors affect the soil composition of water and nutrients which the plants need in order to grow. Our tools today are going to be a pencil, a moisture meter, a notebook, and a 100 foot tape measure. So let's get started. Purpose of this video, I'm going to do row number four first so that you can actually kind of get a clue as to what I'm doing. These other rows that are over here, I'll be taking this tape measure and actually adjusting it to where I can see it as I'm probing out so that I get my correct distances. And one way to do that, if you're in an area that's real thick like this, is to take pin flags and set the pin flags out here somewhere so that as you go along, you can say, I want to measure every three feet, say. So you have your one here, your three here, your six, and then in this case, we're going to go ahead and jump to nine and a half right here. So you'd put your pin flag so as you go along, you'd be able to see these. And since it's 53 feet, you'd need 15 flags. And then you'd move out your distances accordingly, putting your pin flags out. What we'll be doing is we'll be doing 10 foot lengths. We'll get three measurements in here of, of water in the soil. And then we're gonna average those together. And we're gonna call that an average for this 10 feet. The reason that we're doing that is because this is on a slight gradual upgrade. The gradient here between up there and down here may be as much as 18 inches, but I'm not really sure. What this will allow me to do is if I need to put a, a workaround, which would be a tubing back here, which would then run up here and feed water to the top to help get more water up there, I would be aware of that. Since we can use valves, <coughs> we can set these 15 lines up right here with a bypass junction to run fluid over to a line over here that would run to the top. Each time we open one of these valves right here, we would open the corresponding valve, which would allow water to flow up to the top up there and thus get water feeding uniformly from the top. Initially, when you turn this on, this system is going to be energizing all the way to the top. We know that. But with water being pushed through this bypass, to go up and around, it would help equalize pressure up there since this water here is not leaking out like this one is through the drip emitters. The pressure would be higher up there and then would start to backflow into this and, and equalize so that it pushes all the air out and you're getting a uniform um, distribution of water against the length there. I'll do a white paper at this exact moment, and you can see what I'm talking about. What we have here is we have our line that goes across such. But the elevation change from the high point to the low point is about 18 inches. At about 40 feet of run, it appears that the water pretty much stops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bypass in and I'm going to illustrate what I'm doing looking down on the system so you can visualize that. So let me draw that for you. In this drawing, the water is flowing this way and it'll be going along this line at 40 to 45 feet of a 53 foot line, the pressure begins to drop off 40 to 45 feet. By putting in a T-section here with a valve so I can turn it on and off, and a valve here because we're going to put other lines into this, we can turn this, this valve on here and this valve on here, and then what will happen is we turn the water on here, we turn it on here, 
the water flows up, it comes across, and it's going to be under some pressure. The reason being is because there's about an 18 inch elevation change between here and out here to the 53 foot. So the water will flow up with less restriction and will start back feeding in here. At some point, the pressure down here and the pressure in this line will reach equilibrium based on the number of drip emitters in our quarter inch drip line. And then we'll be watering the entire length of this more evenly than what I'm getting now. So that's the system we're getting ready to build. I'm going to be filming that under a different title and I'll show you how that's done as soon as I get that filmed. So let's do the let's set up our pin flags and let's do our probe of this and see what measurements we get. With my flag set up, I've got three feet, six, nine, and the next flag up there, number four, is 12, and that's where I will continue on. From over here, when I'm checking the amount of water in these crops right here, as you can see, I can't really see the ruler, but I can easily see the flags. So I'll just work my way up. As I say, I'm going to start with this slow one right here. We'll do three, and then I'll show you how I average it so I can kind of get a clue as to how much water I have. This is a no-brand <laughs> moisture meter. Uh, there's nothing on it whatsoever that says anything about who makes it or anything else. You can get this at any garden store. So let's start out here. To use this thing, the first thing we want to do is go down about six inches. According to this, we're in the green. Our reading is about four. That's a zero, four. So we come up here to three. We push it in, and this is right in the middle of the drip, and we are getting a three. We come up here to six, push it in, and we have a five. I'm hoping you can see that. I can't see anything on the screen. We come up here to nine. We try to find a place where we can push it in. And right here, we have a nine. So a four, five, three, nine. Let's go chart it. Our four, five, three, nine gives us a total of 21, a value of 21, divided by four is five and a quarter. So we know that our average value in here is five and a quarter. We will now do our next measurements and this nine will become our data point for the beginning. Now this is at nine feet, but the moisture at nine feet and 10 feet is not going to be all that different from, for the most part, which as I say, I'm going to explain in just a moment. So now we'll do our next three data points, and this will give us our next 10 feet with the nine as our start point. Just like up here, this four is where there's no red flag, but that's the start of our tape measure. So let's do the next couple of points. With our flags moved, we're ready for our next three data points. At point one, we are sitting at eight. Hope you can see that. We're past the crops. We are at nine. We are at nine. So 
we now have our data points. 9, 9, 8, and 9. And if you round up one, that's 27 divided by 4, or 26 divided by 4, and that will give you your new set. Grabbing my next points, I find that my value is 8.3 quarters. So I went from 5 and a quarter plus 3, you know, 5 to 8, so I'm, I have 3 points more moisture in this second half, which is a good thing. And I went ahead and did the points on the beans right beside it, and it came out to be seven and a quarter for my measure. Right beside this first set of beans, I went ahead and took the next set of beans on my data points, and I came out with 4.25 for moisture level there. If you look at my chart, the 4.25 is still in the green. It's a little on the low side. It's closer to five, but it's still a little bit on the low. But the point being, at this time, the sprinkler settings are set right. They get 30 minutes each row. These are half a gallon per minute, and they're set to run for 30 minutes. For right now, I've been running them every other day, and I'll have to monitor this to make sure that the moisture level is good. But I have a pretty good data set right now that I can use as a base moisture to ensure that my plants have enough water. Now something that I want to show you before we get too far, these plants look wilted. That is common in the heat because the moisture is not pumped through the system it sort of migrates cell to cell to cell. And as things get hot, the moisture that's in the cells still moves, but it takes a while. So having a little bit of wilted plants is normal and nothing to be concerned about. On the other hand, over here on my pinto beans, they're beginning to show signs of dying off. That is a normal process, which means that the beans are very close to being ready to harvest. Very soon I'll be removing all these beans and all these bean plants and I'll be planting a second time after the soil is worked up and tested for its viability of nutrient. why I try not to use any kind of pesticide. I don't want to kill these guys. That's a bumblebee just going out, pollinating flowers, doing his thing, getting nectar. Following a probe of all these plants out here, over here in our onions, we had readings of 9.5 to 10 most places. Over there in the okra, we had readings of uh, 1 to 0, which means that that is incredibly dry. They'll be getting water tonight, and I'll be resetting the amount of time that it gets for sprinkling. The garden, on average, had a 4 to 4.25 to 8 on the indicator with the exception of where the okra is. So what we know is the okra needs more water, more time, and it is a drip irrigation system. So I'll have to set that up a little bit later this afternoon when it cools off just a bit and get them water. Right now if I ran water through the drip system it would be quite hot by the time it got there and I don't want to kill my plants. So as soon as the sun begins to go down a little bit and it cools off, we'll, we'll hit all that. But we now have a baseline of what the water level in any given area of this garden should be based on the drip irrigation 
as it's set up right now. So I hope this helps and helps you to see how using a, a meter can help you to start setting up the drip. We will revisit this. This will be the first of several on this. If you look, these plants are incredibly wilted. But this afternoon, as soon as the sun starts to go down, they're going to spring right back up. And life will be good. If you have a garden, you've seen this and you're not worried about it. With that said, Dysfunctional Vet out.